<laughs> hey guys, I'm hanging out with just a few of my friends here at Fluker Farms. Ah, there you are. And uh, today, it's all about bugs. And uh, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but they're the future. Help me. pretty much the, the nerve center of what Fluker's all about. I'm with David Fluker. David, this is a family business, man. And Second gen. There you go. And the crazy thing about this is you guys always like to know the ins and outs of what we do with reptiles. Well, it doesn't get more fundamental than what we feed our animals. And you guys know we've had a friendship for a while now and I'm finally here, man. What we're gonna do today is talk about bugs. And um, people think I have a strange job, but I think you probably got an even weirder job than me. So how did this happen? And I'm a second generation uh, cricket farmer. My yeah. father started this back in the 50s. My dad had a good paying plant job. Uh, he was visiting a friend up in Georgia uh, who was growing crickets for fish bait for the local fishermen. And uh, my dad came home and, and asked my mom, could he quit his good steady plant job? And she said yes to to grow crickets and so you know the rest is history that's um, so crazy if you look at flukers today you're, we are really more of a pet industry type company and and the insects are sold as a feeder insect and not so much a fish bait gotcha yeah i mean now what goes into raising crickets i mean i can barely keep the things alive you know and i keep i keep all these reptiles alive feeding off your your crickets but what i mean this is incredible how many crickets are you producing a year, would you say? Do you even know? Millions. Millions, okay. Let's just go with millions. We'll go with millions. Now, this is inside. I wanna see how Yeah, this is what we wanna see. Work. By the way, Tom's back, everybody. There what he is. On? Tom's <laughs> right, and there's Sam trying to hide. We're gonna meet Sam later, man. But um, this is really an awesome uh, project. You got yourselves a cricket science project going on. So what are we looking at right here? And uh, take us through some of the life stages of the crickets and what you need sure. to do for them. So, yeah, this has never been seen before, by the way. Oh, this really? Is, yeah. Uh, and this is our first vertical insect farming building. Okay. Uh, you know, so we're converting to an old cricket, from an old cricket legacy system uh, to this new vertical stack system that, uh, you know, has a footprint the same size of what we do now, but, you know, we can do almost two and a half to three times in the same footprint. So, uh -huh. so you know, they're put out according to... Uh, sizes so you know when they're put out if we're going to harvest them say two or three weeks later we put in the right amount of food so that they eat you know for two to three weeks so okay. we're going to harvest them four or five weeks later then we obviously put in more food because they need more food to eat so once these guys are set up in these verticals they have as much food as they need before you need to remove these the, the, this, is, this is a one and done system can we they get do, inside one yeah i want to get inside okay. i want to see what's going so, on because so let's get inside No way. So, so you literally don't need to open this until you harvest. No, no, you don't. Yeah, that's cool. So, guys, check it out. Oh, we're losing some crickets, man. That'll be all right. Oh, <laughs> come on, that's somebody's that's somebody's gecko's food, man. Uh, this is crazy. Look at that. So, how many are in each one of these bins? You know, with age, uh, you're going to get about 2,000 adults uh, to 2,500. With uh, say like a half inch cricket, you can get up to six or seven thousand. Now you know how you guys have different sizes of crickets that you sell for some smaller animals. You just harvest them earlier. Is that is that what happens? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and so this wick just like you said, it just wicks up, and these guys when they want to drink, they just kind of go on over there. Because I think a lot of the big problem with crickets, I know, and me trying to keep them alive even in the uh, terrarium, is they drown in the water bowls. Yeah. So you can't really do that, you know. I had a lot of failed water systems prior to this. System. You had a lot of failed. Oh yeah, I had <laughs> a lot of failed water systems. That's the thing that we're learning yeah. about David here is there he's and, and I lovingly the redneck engineering is that the that's, redneck that, that's a term of endearment. <laughs> that's for real. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of different things went on here. Oh my gosh, it's so. just crazy cuz you know, some people wouldn't think that this much goes on. Get in there, guys. Get in there. But this is your business, man. I mean, this is your livelihood and it started with crickets but you guys are all about bugs we are and and, and you know uh, 
with this system, you know, part of our hope is is maybe you know we can expand this to, uh, you know, to 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 you know countries that are poor where you know family farms would work out and maybe they could have a, a source of income and do some do some protein. So it's you know it's kind of like a greater good bigger picture. Okay. You know, but I would love to see this type of setup done in uh, in you know uh, a lesser developed country. And so, what would when you say a protein would this be for human consumption? This would primarily be for human consumption on the crickets. Okay. Uh, you know, crickets uh, jokingly are the gateway insect uh, into the human consumption market, especially for the West. And so, um, and so, this is how I see this panning out. Well, you know, you bring up an interesting point because Sophia years ago had something called a cricket licket, and it was a cricket in a lollipop. Very familiar with it. Uh, I have eaten, you know, my share of insects. Now, okay. I eat a. A cricket and a lollipop, probably not, but I've but I've eaten plenty of these guys, I promise. That's incredible. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? This is interesting. I mean, this is actually, you know, you're on the verge of, you know, a new kind of ingredient to the human dietary industry, if that makes any sense. Because I've been reading a lot, actually, about that. And in addition to crickets, you guys are also doing superworms. We do superworms. Um, we have mealworms. We have, flight, we have flightless fruit flies. Wow. Uh, we have Madagascar hissing cockroaches, and we do black soldier fly as well. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I missed any. I think that's the during COVID when COVID hit and everybody was ordering from their from their house. Uh, you know, we were shipping out over five to six thousand orders a week. Wow, man! So these are the old school way of doing things here. And how many years have the, were these running? Too many. Too many years. Yeah, I can see. Like, just check it out. He was going over it. We got your, you know, the hydration right here. Um, but they got to fill these up once a week and that's a lot of manpower, you know? A lot of manpower to put in a clean water jar once a week. Wow, and also, of course, the open top um, could potentially lead for some pests. Uh, yeah, we're looking at these pests now that we're trying to get rid of. The new system totally locks them out and they'll be gone. So awesome, that's, that's and so the they can't climb out. That's what I find interesting. They can't go past this, uh, this tape barrier, so, which is another thing. You have to make sure the tape's always good. So. Yeah. So it's a lot more work just so it's just a whole lot more work like so this will this will knock down our uh our labor by about two thirds that's crazy all right we've got to keep getting these reptiles fed what else do we got to look at we got to look at some super worms man so we got oh yeah look at that yeah so we've got supers in here no way that is insane. So, I mean, it's just millions and millions and millions of bugs. And uh, I can tell you that Kate would not like this, guys. This is a trip that I'm sure my wife is okay with not coming to. But look at all these super worms, man. Wild, man. And then how do you breed these things? Like, should, do you have some breeders here? Like, or is that a secret sauce that I'm not allowed to sit? No, we could probably locate some beetles. Um, Faction, maybe wild. All right, there you go. So, so now, how does it work? Like, so they're currently laying eggs. All right. Yeah, they'll just sift out these beetles, and uh, and then they then they just stay in a nursery pan like this, and then they get um, dumped into a larger grow out container as they get bigger. That's it. So you let them they lay their eggs in the substrate. Yes. You don't take the eggs out. You just let them do their thing. We just in let them hatch and do their things. Yeah. Can these? How? What's the life cycle? Like how long from start to finish? Ooh, we may have to bring in the entomologist because there's too many insects. But this one is typically about a two to three month life cycle. Okay. It's, it's it's a lot longer, and they typically lay. I want to say for about thirty days. But yeah, no breeding quote season. A lot of insects, huh? Yeah. No no breeding season. There's just there's never a breeding work. season. Now. Interesting. Yeah. Wild. You know, you talk about sustainability. Um, and there's an insect here that you're working on that's actually quite a powerful recycler. Um, yes. Talk to us a little bit about this soldier fly and maybe we can kind of go see it. Sure. So um, there's an insect, a fly called the black soldier fly. It's not a pest fly. It doesn't spread pathogens like a house fly. Uh, it actually lives in the trees. Okay. Uh, you know, so it doesn't bother you. It doesn't light on your food. Uh, and it and it doesn't even eat after uh, it's 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 a fly it just drinks. Um, so it is a black soldier fly. It has really become the darling of uh, the insect uh, industry. It's a it's a great feedstock to feed other animals. 
Uh, but, but again, as you mentioned, you know, uh, it's really uh, an incredible recycler of waste streams. Um, and we also, you know, grow it on some standard diets. And th these are these are some of the insects here being grown. This is a black soldier fly. So, so typically you would you would harvest and sift these guys out, uh, and then and then you would be left with the frass, which is insect poop, and that's an incredible fertilizer. Uh, so really, this is a zero waste type thing. Um, and again, you know, these guys have great protein, great fats, uh, you know, just, just a very uh, nutritious insect. No way. So nutritious for animals and possibly for people? You know, I'm not sure that the U.S. is ready for this on the people's <laughs> side. Like I said, let's stick with crickets being a gateway insect. Maybe we can move into this. However, I will tell you this. Uh, there is an ice cream made in South Africa from the fat of these guys. No. So, so, I mean, it is coming. And as we look at, um, you know, food security in the world and lots of population, this is, this is kind of where it's going. And so that's the uh, latest Fluker project. Is, no uh, way. The, these guys, soldier fly are these guys generating heat just from rubbing against each other? Because they feel warm. They're going to generate some heat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is crazy, guys. Like, you can actually put your hands and feel the warmth of, I mean, it's a larva, but you could call this a maggot, can't you? Exactly, it is a maggot. It's a maggot. Yeah. Look at that, guys. These are fun. Maggots are fun, yes. That is awesome, man. I mean, you got to have, um, I'll tell you what, though, this building is testing my limits. I ain't going to lie to you. You could smell some ammonia in here. Yeah. And, uh, I, now's a good time for me to tell you folks that I'm actually, I found out that I'm allergic to uh, insect exoskeletons. And um, yeah, so isn't that funny? Uh, but these guys, I mean, this is really kind of cool. They feel good, actually. Kind of weird. I almost want to get in here and just kind of hang out. I tell you, they actually use them in the medical industry too. Not, How's you know, you've got to grow them sterile, but they'll eat, you know, rotting flesh and things. So. These guys will. Mm -hmm. No way. So they really do an amazing. That's like movie. medieval sounding. That, that is like medieval. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's like the other weird and special sterile, uh, you know, environments. So Fluker, you know, what started out as uh, you know some crickets for some bait has now you guys are feeding an industry. You're feeding the reptile industry, and potentially now getting into more sustainability projects. And that's that's just really amazing, man. There's a lot going on, and who would have thought just with insects that all this, did you think your life would like revolve around insects even though your dad was doing it? Yes, I always thought I would do something with insects. I really? just, yeah, it's, it was, you know, it felt like it was a family obligation. And okay. it's, it's hard to explain, but I can trace back my first payment into social security at age 11. So, you know, there were no laws about working kids. There's still no laws about working farmer kids because there's special exemptions if you're a farmer. Okay. You know, you can, you know, when it's time to harvest the crop, it doesn't matter what age you are. You know, that brings up a good point though. So how the heck, uh, how do I know I'm getting 2000 crickets in my box? How do you guys count these things up? Well, we do the crickets by volume, but that we're working on a, uh, uh, a system now that will actually count them using AI and a lot of cameras. What? Uh, let's I'll, go. Do you have that here? Let's go see it. I want to check it out. What we got here? So these are five-day-old neonates. Uh, these we're going to bring to the to the counter. We're going to count them out. Uh, and so, you know, when we put out X pounds of, of of waste stream in a bin like that, we will actually dose out the exact number needed of these neonates to eat and consume that that waste stream within about 10 days. So, so these guys quickly, rapidly develop into that much larger size. Just, I mean, it, these guys just eat all the time. They're like, you know, little, little cows that just eat, eat, and eat. How can anything count this bubbling mass? Okay, David, this thing, no way it counts all those maggots. This thing counts uh, 4,000 insects a second. 4,000 insects and this a is second. A, uh, this is a partnership that, that we have with Sciotex. You know, Fluger is also a family affair. This is your nephew, isn't it? Vance, what's up Vance? We had dinner last night. Again. Again, not only do they have the best bugs in, in the world, they got some darn good food out here in Cajun country, man. I'm very excited about being here, but 
What are we looking at here? And we just saw it run through something. How many, you know, how many maggots was that? Yeah, so that was about 11,000. That was 11,000 maggots. Yeah, so we we grow and sift our black soldier fly larvae neonates, okay. which is what we're counting. Um, we can we can pack about four to 5,000 a, a second. Um, we are currently packing these guys in, in the cups. We're gonna pack them today. We're gonna ship them out today okay. to our customers. They're gonna grow them up on food and feed them to some reptiles. No way, so that's pretty crazy. How does this machine count the insects? Yeah, so it's got two cameras in here. This, this is the guts and the brains. Okay. Um, they're they're kind of looking at each other and taking five, 10,000 pictures a second. Um, so it's it's pretty 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 high tech stuff. So it takes the picture and then the computer actually knows to differentiate what it's looking at. Correct. Like, is there an AI in here? Or? Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of beyond us. Okay. You know, we right. uh, but we're, we're working with Cytotex. They they've been really great partners. Okay. Trying to put this together and, and uh, bring some some type of technology to the insect industry. All right. Very cool. Oh, there you go. So that's eleven thousand. Yeah. So that's eleven thousand black soldier fly larvae. Now, can I ask you a question? Yes. Do you have to, to, to prove this machine out, did you guys have to do any counting? Eric and I have sat in the conference room for hours counting one maggot, two maggot, two larva, three larva. One larvae. maggot, two maggot, yeah, three maggot, four. This little maggot's going out the door. That's pretty crazy, man. Um, this is wild. Just the technology that you guys, you really are becoming, uh, I mean, this is a 21st century insect endeavor. And uh, it's all to make sure the customer uh, gets what they pay for and it's more efficient for you guys as running a business and you mentioned the guy the gentleman Eric and we got to Oh wait, hold on. We're just transfixed by the uh, maggots pouring off here. Tom gets into his artistic mode <laughs> But I want you guys to meet Eric because so many times uh, On the channel you guys are asking me. How do you get involved in animals? What are some jobs in animals? Eric? You're from the great state of New Jersey um, As is my wife. She's yep. in Tom's River. Where'd you grow up? Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Cherry Hill, I know Cherry Hill. I did BMX shows there, right, right over the bridge from Philly. Mm -hmm. um, you're a scientist, mm -hmm. particularly you're an entomologist. Yeah. Okay, so are you psyched? I mean, is this like a dream job? Um, like, uh, how did you get involved in bugs? I went to my master's degree, so my okay. graduate school, okay. um, over at the University of Georgia. And honestly, I didn't know really what I wanted to do and an opportunity came to me actually to do mosquito research. And so I did work with mosquitoes, dog heartworm, um, looking at how heavy metals affected their development, affect their confidence. And then after I graduated, honestly, I tried to look for any kind of job with insects. And honestly, Fluker Farms was one of those jobs. And even though I didn't really work with beetles or other crickets before I work with flies. Okay. And so that kind of really started the entire career was this opportunity with Fluker Farms. Here at Fluker, what, what do you help them with? What are your, some of your duties? Um, so I am an entomologist, I'm also a manager. Um, on the entomology side, I look at our colonies, make sure they're healthy, make sure we're doing the right inputs and getting the right outputs. If something's off, then I go investigate, see if there's something wrong, if someone's not doing the right thing. Um, but I also test and research some of these insects, seeing, all right, if I add this many and put this much food in there, what am I gonna get out? If I increase the amount of insects, do I get more insects out or less insects? Huh. So looking at if they'll work together a little bit more. It's just interesting to see how many, you know, number one, what strikes me about your story is that uh, it's never a straight line life you know what i mean there's always a an interesting path to get to do things uh that you maybe never thought you'd be interested in but it seems like you fit in here really well and you're needed and he's the bug guy now there you go man say hello to him all right let me know if you guys like bugs say hello to eric and thanks vance for showing us this and uh, i think it's time now we go see where the insects wind up i mean we gotta get them to uh you guys let's see how they do it Shipping process. Get out of here. So this is the final stop for these insects on their way to their uh, 
final, final destination, which is inside the stomach of the nation's reptiles all over the place. Huh? Exactly. So are these crickets? Uh, these can be almost anything. They can be mealworm crickets. All right, yep, yeah. our Jamie Watson. Hey, Jamie, you're gonna be getting your crickets real soon here, buddy, so uh, this is really cool. I mean, this is on its way to a customer and they can order directly from you guys uh, to get their animals fed. You know, this, this type of automation allows us to do you know, much larger volumes of, of, of smaller things. You know, so we, whenever COVID hit, we were processing about five to 6,000 orders each week. I mean, it was like it blew up overnight. So this is uh, a huge project. I had no idea, no, no real concept of what was involved and the amount and volume that they're shipping and growing here at Fluger Farms. Uh, it's really an interesting part for me to see what goes in uh, to the reptile industry. This is just one segment of it. Feeders are a very big segment. So uh, David, thank you so much, man. And there's gonna be some more from Fluger Farms as well uh, in the coming days and weeks. Cause you know what? They've really rolled out the red carpet for me here. Uh, they've been helping out Camp Cannon. We appreciate it. And uh, I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. So go on over to Fluger Farms, check them out. Where can they uh, place their orders? Flukerfarms.com. There you go, man. Flukerfarms.com for some of the tastiest uh, bugs this side of the Mississippi. Any side of the Mississippi, to be perfectly honest. We're literally right on the Mississippi. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for having me, bud.